I'd also like to request everyone to please rise. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for all the blessings we receive for your goodness, guidance, and protection. Father, we lift up to you our program this afternoon. We pray for the student presenter. Send your Holy Spirit to enlighten them that they may be able to completely understand their paper for them to answer the questions of the panelists. Bless them with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that they need for this defense. We also pray for the panelists. Bless them with salient questions that, and may they contribute ideas and inputs for the improvement of the papers. We also pray for the listeners. Let this activity inspire their curiosity and may they learn something from the presentation. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Ma'am D. So, uh, uh, before we proceed with the uh, um, criteria, I'd like to introduce our three experts who will be helping us in uh, assessing the quality of the papers no, of our agricultural engineering students. Our first uh, panelist is presently the director of the accreditation of Central Philippine University. He's involved with the socioeconomic uh, related studies and also a faculty of uh, the College of Agriculture, Resource and Environmental Sciences. Let's welcome Dr. Reynaldo N. Dusaran. Our second panelist is also a faculty of the College of Engineering. He is involved in renewable energy related projects and a licensed mechanical engineer. Let's welcome engineer Salvador Senorio. And our third panelist uh, is also a faculty of the College of Agriculture, Resource, and Environmental Sciences and involved with the uh, management and also uh, uh, extension related projects. A licensed agricultural engineer, Engineer Levy de los Santos. And also he is our uh, director for uh, Community Engagement and Le uh, Service Learning Center. Now for our criteria, no? uh, our students, our five presenters this afternoon will be judged according to the following. For relevance and timeliness, that would be 15 points. Second would be for the quality of the research and paper, uh, 55 points. So this would cover organization and style, uh, methodology, their, the way they would present or they have interpreted and analyzed their data, including their conclusions, recommendations, and also uh, the, related, the review of, their, uh, of related studies and literature. For the third part, they would also be uh, judged according to the quality of presentation for this afternoon's activity. That would be 30 points. So that would cover delivery, use of visual aids, response to questions and discussions. So uh, now I would like to introduce our five students. As I call on your name, please uh, stand to be recognized. The first presenter, they are all fifth year uh, agriculture engineering students under CARES. The first presenter is Princess June S. Lasquite, to be followed by Josan Marie T. Ferrasol, Desiree M. Arostique, Chiara Alexandra Bigolin, and JVP Tenefrancia. So each of them will be given 20 minutes to present and then 10 minutes for questioning. So, uh, at the end of uh, 20 minutes, uh, Mom D will be flashing there, time's up. No? So, that would signify the end of your presentation. If you go beyond that, my deduction. No? Sige. So, uh, let's start with our first presenter. Her study is about the design, fabrication, and evaluation of a microalgae harvester. Let's welcome Princess June S. Lasquite.
Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, panels. I am Princess June Lasquite, and today I will present to you my study about the design, fabrication, and evaluation of a microalgae harvester. The Philippines is known to have the most diverse algae. Each algae has its own function and use. The microalgae growth is often viewed as a problem as it grows on backyard swimming pools and in-home fish tanks. On the other hand, algae play an important role in agriculture. Most people don't know that microalgae can be used as animal feeds and can be consumed as food supplements by humans. The most popular application of bio the most popular application of the microalgae is in the pharmaceuticals, spirulina and the chlorella. As we all know, chlorella is the main ingredient for cherry fur. Microalgae can be exploited for wastewater treatment and has recently been rigorously studied as a, as a source of biofuel. Due to these reasons, it was proposed to design a microalgae harvester. The microalgae harvester is a manually operated machines, a ma machine that is capable of producing concentrated microalgae. The main objective of the machine is to design, fabricate, and evaluate its performance. Specifically, it aims to test Specifically, it aims to test and evaluate the machine in terms of its yield, dripping time, harvesting capacity, and actual cell concentration. It also aims to analyze its operating costs. The machine was fabricated at a local machine shop in Molo, Iloilo City, last December 2018 to January 2019. The performance testing and evaluation was done at the Alga Paste Laboratory Facilities, College of Fisheries and Ocean Sciences under the Institute of Aquaculture, Multi-Species Hatchery of the F University of the Philippines last January 25 to February 11, 2019. This study significantly aims to give an access to aggregated microalgae cells that can be potentially used in pharmaceuticals aquaculture, biofuels, and food industry. The live concentrated microalgae from the harvester will be able to support the hatchery operations, especially during inclement weather. Air and water pollution will be minimized. Carbon emissions and heavy metals from factory sludge and nitrogen and phosphorus runoff can be controlled by applying microalgae in their waste water treatments. Materials and methods. So under the design criteria are the construction materials, which are the HDPE drum used for flocculation, the pipes, the stainless sheets, stainless steel bars, and the angle bars. The manpower requirement, the machine can be operated by only one person. The material used is the microalgae culture. The power source during the flocculation was the 12 volts battery and the, operate, and the cost of the machine is 25,000. So he, these are the components of the machine. So this is the flocculating tank, the HDPE drum. The drainage pipe that is made of PVC <coughs> and the support frame, the discharge pit, the filter, and the drip controller. The flocculating tank is used to hold the microalgae culture and it is where the flocculation occurs. The drip controller is used to control the drip of the microalgae. The filter, a cloth was used to filter the microalgae culture and it is also where the, the concentrated microalgae culture is harvested. The discharge pit, it is where the excess water from the harvester is collected and drained. So the operation begins by loading the microalgae culture Using a submersible water pump, it is then flocculated in the flocculating tank by electrocuting uh, aluminum tubes by 12 volts battery. After the flocculations, it was then allowed to drip at a dripping rate of 500 ml per minute. The settled microalgae culture is then 
harvested using a spatula. The excess water from the culture is drained in the discharge pit. Performance evaluation. The machine was evaluated by conducting five trials to ensure the accuracy of the data obtained. It started by loading the 200 liters of the microalgae culture flocculated for 30 minutes and it is then dripped until the flocculating tank is drained. The time required to be completely drained was recorded and the harvested microalgae culture Samples from the harvested microalgae culture were harvested and subjected for cell counting. 10 ml of microalgae culture was collected for each trial. The data collection and the parameters analyzed. The data collected are the volume and dripping time which is needed to get the harvesting capacity of the machine, the yield and the actual concentration to get the theoretical cell concentration and the harvesting efficiency. The amount of electrical energy used is also collected to get electrical energy consumption rate and operating cost was also analyzed. So the instruments used are the beaker, weighing scale, spatula, timer, resealable plastic bag, hemocytometer, microscope, battery, and submersible pump and falcon tube. The results. These data are the yield, harvesting capacity, and actual cell concentration of the microalgae culture. The machine has an average dripping time of 4.63 hours with a yield of 241.35 grams and an average harvesting capacity of 51.57 grams per hour and an actual cell concentration of 2.43 billion cells per ml. These data are the cell count before the operation. It was done by, use, by collecting 10 ml of samples for each trial in which for each trial, three samples were collected and counted by using a hemocytometer with five blocks naming the A, B, C, D, and E, getting the average, giving an average of 3.42 billion cells per ml for trial one and 3.63 billion cells for trial 2, 3.30 billion a million cells for trial 3, 3.05 million for trial 4, and 3.02 million for trial 5. The cell count after the operation. The procedures in getting cell count for after the operation is the same with getting the cell count before the operation ten, by getting 10 ml of sample for each trial and three samples for each trial and the cells were counted by using a hemocytometer with five blocks the A, B, C, D, and E giving an average of 2.62 billion cells for trial 1 2.75 billion cells for trial 2 2.62 billion cells for trial 3 and 1.88 billion cells for trial 4 and 2.30 billion cells for trial 5. The harvesting efficiency of the microalgae harvester. The harvesting efficiency is computed by dividing the actual cell concentration by the theoretical cell concentration. The actual cell concentration for trial 1 is 2.62 billion cells per ml with a theoretical Cell concentration of 3.4 cells per billion cells per ml, giving a harvesting efficiency of 77.03%. For trial 2, 86.67%. Trial 3, 96.79%. Trial 4, 94.37%. And for trial 5, 82.65%, giving an average harvesting efficiency of 87.5%. The flocculating time and the electric energy consumption rate of the machine. <clears throat> this refers to the battery that is used to, to electrocute the aluminum tubes that is used for flocculation, which is a 12 volts battery and 
12 volts and 10 amperes battery, giving a rated power of 0 0.12 kilowatts with a fluctuating time of 0 0.5 hours or 30 minutes that is fixed for five trials, giving an electric energy consumption rate of 0 0.06 kilowatt hour. The cost of operation of the microalgae harvester. So the investment cost is 25,000, giving a depreciation cost of 20.55, interest on investment of 16.54, repair and maintenance of 2.05, insurance of repair and maintenance and insurance of 2.05, and the total of 45.89. The electric energy cost is 3.12, labor cost is 200, with a total of 203.12, giving a total cost of 249.01 pesos per day, and an operating cost of 0 0.8 pesos per gram. Conclusions. Based on the results of the study, it can be concluded that the designed microalgae harvester can, be, can produce an average 241.35 grams of concentrated microalgae at an average tripping time of 4.63 hour. The machine has a harvesting capacity of 51.57 grams per hour and an overall harvesting efficiency of 87.5%. The microalgae can be fabricated using locally available materials. It had an investment cost of 25,000, a fixed cost of 45.89 pesos per day, a variable cost of 203.12 pesos per day, and a total cost of 249.01 pesos per day. The machine had an overall operating cost of 0 0.8 grams per pesos per gram of microalgae. The recommendations are, the ball valve in the drip controller should be changed to one where it can be easily opened. The size of the holes on the drip controllers should be increased so that the microalgae culture will not stock during the operation. The cloth in the filter should be changed to a cloth with a finer mesh size. The cloth in the filter should have a frame that can hold it during the operation. Further mod modification and the design of the machine to increase the harvesting capacity at a shorter dripping time. Thank you. Thank you, Princess June. So uh, our panelists is now ready to ask questions. And then after them, if we still have the time, we can have also uh, questions from the audience. One of the problems of your uh, result is uh, you have the data, but you have no uh, graph two percent, then, uh, you know, almost all of the papers worldwide, kung gina present gani na siya, dapat nakagraph gina. Because some people don't know how to speak English, like Chinese, like uh, mga Indians. No? So, uh, amun na sa una ang problema no, sa, dito sa isa, gin correct ko na siya. Because during our study in, uh, I, I'm a fellow of the United Nations University in Tokyo, uh, we studied in India. So, so, what is important is you have the data, but it's very difficult to interpret the data if I don't know how to speak English. Like, for example, if I am a Chinese, I cannot understand uh, all the English that you wrote. No? But what is important for us is to have your, your data plotted in a graph. So, assuming you have your benchmark or your baseline data based on the literature, then your finding may be different from the others, basi ba yun ang imong result. Okay? So, if possible, uh, you have your data, uh, put that in the Excel uh, worksheet, then plot so that you can have the, the line graph. Nami nami ang imong presentation. And you can present your paper in other countries if you do that uh, graphing. So, then you have to interpret kung ano na siya ang butang balon because you have to consider the audience nga inusente kami siya na da. and later some of the students will be using your data as reference because your result is a public document okay and then be responsible of all the the writings 
ang mga grammar na ito, da, kung paano na ito present that is your responsibility. Kung hindi mo kaya, you have to ask somebody, kaya correct ang imo nga, but you still have time to to check, no? And to islan mo na, i-correct mo ang mga sala na ito, then, nami ang presentation. So, have your data and the, the graph. Halimbawa, ang pinaka the best na is you have your benchmark. Ano na siya ang existing? Then, anong ginobra mo? What is the difference nami ayon ng imo kumpara sa iban? Then, kung manami ng imo result, uh, uh, cost-wise, maayo siya, then, they will use as reference ang imo nga uh, output. So, can you do the, the graphing of your data so that it is very easy for us to interpret sa mga result. Okay, sir. Noted. Um, the figures no, and uh, the tables are uh, far from uh, your discussion um, sa page, no? So, three pages pagag ma uh, makita mo ang uh, uh, figure table no three uh, prefer to figure four no do medyo layo siya so um uh, should be uh, near sa discussion no? i don't know kay it's a picture to paano mo na present no para maglapit siya Thank you for this paper. Um, have you seen a rice harvester? Yes, sir. Um, your title is uh, Microalgae Harvester. Um, in the comparison of a rice harvester and a microalgae harvester, what can you say? Just compare the differences no, on how you, uh, let's say you've seen already the rice harvester as mentioned by Dr. Dusara. Now, try to compare their differences in terms of size, maybe, or operating principle. Um, for the rice harvester, sir, its operation starts by cutting the rice scraps from the field. And as compared to the microalgae harvester, um, the microalgae culture is used, but it is um, there's a process before you can use the microalgae harvest, a uh, microalgae culture. So, and uh, rice is uh, naturally occurring in the field, so as microalgae. Um, the microalgae, sir, you cannot use the microalgae harvester directly for microalgae. It needs to be cultured first before you can use the microalgae harvester. But there is a naturally occurring microalgae. Yes, sir, but in small amounts. In bodies of water. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, I, I was just looking at the title and the, the process and your product. It seems that... Uh, uh, the calling this uh, equipment as a microalgae harvester may not be appropriate. Um, for me, it's more of a, a microalgae concentrator. Uh, the end product is a concentrated uh, microalgae. We are not actually harvesting microalgae uh, from the field or from what is naturally uh, occurring, right? Yes, sir. I don't know. I, I'm just... <laughs> or maybe you can explain why the use of the word harvester. harvester yeah. uh, is there any technical basis for that? Or it's, is, is that the term used in aquaculture? Could you uh, elaborate on this one? Because most of us here, uh, or some of the audience, has uh, no background on aquaculture. So maybe you can explain what Dr. Design is trying to, to, to be uh, cleared on this harvester word. 
um, it is uh, it is really microalgae harvesters, sir. But to correct it, uh, the co concentrated microalgae harvesters, sir, because you are harvesting the concentrated microalgae. Why 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 is there a need to harvest or to concentrate microalgae? And is there a problem of harvesting microalgae? and make it available for use. Yes, sir, because the microalgae harvester, sir, is a combination of uh, different harvesting techniques for the, for the microalgae. Do we have any intended uh, use for the concentrated uh, microalgae harvested out of your harvester? Uh, yes, sir, the product will be used as feeds for the fish and and it can be also used in pharmaceuticals and other fields. Sir. Is there, um, I, I was looking at your recommendation, if there is uh, a recommendation in terms of how you would uh, use the concentrated uh, microalgae, particularly uh, storage, Pardon, sir. Storage recommendation. Once you concentrate your, once you harvested your concentrated uh, microalgae, do you intend to use this right away, or is there a need for storage? And uh, if there is a need for storage, uh, what can you recommend? Actually, sir, the the harvested my concentrated microalgae culture is placed in a resealable plastic bag and it is and it is placed for fridge for storage um i was expecting um, maybe a research on determining uh, the uh, period of uh, the shelf life of your uh, stored or packed uh, concentrated microalgae no limit There is a limit, sir, but I think I didn't include it in my presentation. So that's why I'm expecting that this can be an area of uh, a follow-up uh, research. Okay. Is there an available, uh, commercially available uh, microalgae, uh, maybe a concentrated microalgae? Um, as of the moment, sir, there is none. So, um, if the, it is not available, why uh, did you come up with this kind of research? Because it has, um, the concentrated microalgae has uh, several use in the future, sir, and, and has the potential for use such as biofuels and pharmaceuticals if it is further studied and developed. In other words, uh, it has corresponding value, right? So um, if you can have some estimates of the commercial value of a gram of uh, microalgae, I think you can make some uh, uh, economic analysis as to its present cost of 0.8 uh, pesos per gram, okay, right? Yes, it may be a gram of microalgae uh, uh, can be bought in the market at, uh, say, how much? Uh, 80 pesos, 8 pesos, 800 pesos? Yes. And this means business. Yes, sir. More questions from the panelists? Uh, you mentioned about repair and uh, maintenance. Uh, is uh, I have no I did not read any uh, procedure or uh, process of uh, repair and maintenance or after uh, the use uh, how do you uh, maintain the, the equipment uh, after use it is uh, it is washed with um, salt water first then rinsed with um, fresh water. How long did you finish your 
five trials. Per, per trial, sir, it is maximum of one day, but it took a while before to go finish the five trials because every after trial, I've seen some issues, but minor issues only. Um, so, when you say issues, what do you mean? Um, Um, for the first, uh, for the preliminary test, sir, we noticed uh, the there are still microalgae left on the tank. So the, for the first trial, um, after the preliminary run, we fixed the issue. Then for the first trial, we noticed that there are still some left, but, but minimal only, sir. Meaning that uh, the practices per trial have some variation. The first trial only, sir. After that, it's, it was okay. This, uh, but the rest of the trials, uh, the same uh, practice was followed. Yes, sir. Did you allow some cleaning before the next trial? Yes, sir. For every after trial, sir, it was clean. Will the harvesting efficiency of 77.03% explain uh, the problem that you have said on the first trial? Um, no, sir. Actually, sir, the efficiency depends on the cell concentra concentration before and after the operation. You said you, may, you have the same uh, source, the same culture. Uh, no, sir, because the cell co the culture used for every trial is different, sir. Different culture for different trial? And same culture, but different culture time. What is the reason? Because um, the microalgae, sir, takes three days to be cooled. The culture time of the microalgae is three days, but some due to the lack of storage, some are four days of culture. So in other words, uh, you would expect variation in your uh, harvesting efficiency because you don't have uniform uh, theoretical cell concentration, so to speak. The cell concentration is not affected, sir. It is only affected during flocculation. But the initial process, you said, varies. So you should have the same uh, process observed uh, in in the in the in the trial. Yes. Any more questions from the panelists before we re maybe ask our audience? As a case, sir. Does the quality of water uh, vary the performance of your harvester? No, sir, because the water is only from one source, only. Oh, but have you checked the quality, the pH of the water or salinity of water was checked? Yes, sir. So you have your basis here? Yes. Pardon, sir. Have you wrote the, the basis for the soil qua the, the water quality for the testing and the evaluation of your device yes sir the water is 32 32 the ph level is 32 32 temperature oh, it's the salinity sir on 32 salinity is 32 30. then the, the ph um, 32 what 32 P 32 P ppt okay what about the ph the pH was not recorded since it doesn't really affect the uh, cultures, only the salinity. So assuming uh, if the device will be used with uh, basic water or uh, acidic water, what happens to the, the, the harvest quantity? 
um, you cannot use different source of water, so only the the sorry sir, but for my machine, the microalgae culture was only provided, and I didn't. So you have to make that as a constraint. Pardon, sir. You have to make this a. Uh uh, you have to make that as a, a constraint for the testing and evaluation. Notice. Okay, so time is up. And uh, thank you, Princess June. So just take note of the recommendation, uh, I mean the suggestions of our panel. So for our next presenter, Okay, our next presenter is also related to aquaculture. Now, so we have Josan Mariti Ferrasol. Uh, the title of her study is Design, Fabrication, and Performance Evaluation of a Recirculating Aquaculture System for Production of Tilapia. Hello. So good afternoon, everyone. For today, I will present to you my study entitled Design, Fabrication, and Performance Evaluation of a Recirculating Aquaculture System for the Production of Tilapia. Aquaculture, in terms of food production in the world, is one of the fastest growing sectors. Tilapia, as a culture species, is high in demand for food and also the profit level is very high. In 2016, according to the Philippine statistics, tilapia production in the Philippines was at 140,540.71 metric tons or about 9,687,160 pesos point six centavos. In Western Visayas, Iloilo has the highest volume and amount of production in tilapia comprising of about 1,278.14 metric tons or roughly 166,404.18 pesos. So, Recirculating Aquaculture System, or RAS, is a tank-based system which allows the reuse of water for the culture tanks through mechanical and biological filtration between each use. The tank-based system has a potential edge over the bigger aquaculture system since it has higher production, better environment control, lower use of water, lower impact on the natural environment, and can achieve market control, time, and size independence. The objecti objectives of this study was to design a low-cost recir low recirculating aquaculture system for the production of tilapia and evaluate its effect on fish growth. The specific obje objectives were to design and fabricate using the commercial biofiltering medium available in the market and utilizing the recycled plastic bottle cups as an alternative medium. To test in terms of its effects on fish growth of the two different systems using two types of medium in terms of temperature and pH level of water, feed conversion ratio, specific growth rate, and the survival rate. Also, it, to evaluate and statistically compare the effect on the weight gain of fishes on both systems and to compute and compare the investment cost of the two systems and their operating costs. The time and place of the study. The study was conducted at the Tilapia Hatchery of the Southeast Asian Fisheries Development Center last December 16, 2018 to January 2, 2019. It was also conducted on the same place on January 3 to February 7, 2018. The methodology, design criteria. Components of the system. This includes the four main parts of the system, which are the fish tanks, the mechanical filter, the biofilter, and the sump tank. 
the system capacity, it should be able to hold a 30 kilogram of harvesting weight of fish per cubic meter. The alternative biofilter should be equal to the commercial biofilter used. The filtration effic efficiency, which the mechanical filter should be able to settle the suspended solids and the biofilter should be able to get the toxic substances from the water. Construction materials. The mechanical bio and biofilter and also the sump tank are made of food grade plastic drums and pipes and PVC pipes are used for the connection. The cost of two different systems should, did not decrease 15,000 pesos. The description of the system. So the system mainly has four parts. The fish tank, the mechanical filter, the biofilter, and the sump tank. The fish tank, this is where the fishes were grown and fed. The mechanical fi filter is where the suspended solids are settled by using the radial, radial flow filtering technique. The biofilter is where the biofilter media were placed. For tank one or for the system one, the media used were the commercial biofiltering media, while for the tank two or the system two, the, we utilized the recycled plastic bottle cups. The sump tank is where the water that was subjected to filtration is stored before it is pumped back to the fish tanks. This, uh, the pump is used to pump water from the sump tank, sump tank back to the fish tanks. Aerators are used to supply oxygen for the fishes on the fish tank and also on the biofilter tank or unit for the growing of bacteria. Pipes and fittings were used to connect one unit to the other to allow the flow and recirculation of water on the system. The principle of operation. So as the fishes excretes waste such as, such as suspended solids and toxic substances, they accumulate in the tank which, for which um, they accumulate on the tank which causes the water to be polluted. So the, the water goes from the fish tank goes to the mechanical fi filter wherein the suspended solids are settled. A small drum was put on the mechanical filter to help steal and regulate the, the disturbances on water for more effective settlement of the suspended solids. Then the water from the mechanical filter goes to the biofilter where the water where the where the water is cleaned by the bacteria which are housed on the media and they clean the water the <laughs> they clean the water from toxic substances before it goes to the sump tank wherein a pump is used to pump up the water to the fish tanks. Instruments used were the digital thermometer for the temperature of the water, the pH meter for the pH level of water, pail for the amount, for getting the amount of water, the timer for the time the water is being pumped back to the fish tank, the beaker which is used to get the volume of water, and the portable scale to get the initial and final weight of the fishes. The data collected were the volume of the tank, which is 1.3 cubic meter of water, the amount of water that is pumped back, the pumping time in pumping the water, the sucking rate, the initial average body weight, and the final average body weight of the fishes, the daily feed rate, and the mortality. Parameters that were analyzed were the stocking density, which is 195 pieces, the daily feed rate of the fish per fish, which is 0.72 grams, the flow rate of the water, which 0.12 for the, for the tank one and 0.8 for the tank two, 
cubic meters per second. The daily weight gain of the fishes, the feed conversion ratio, the specific growth rate per day, and the survival rate. For the results, average water quality data recorded on fish tanks were the parameters were the water temperature, pH, and flow rate. Tank 1 has 27.33 water temperature compared to the tank 2, which has 27. The pH of tank 1 was at 8.93. For tank 2, it was 8.77. The flow rate, liter, the flow rate were 0.12 for liters per second for tank 1 and 0 0.08 for tank 2. The growth data of the fishes in the two tanks. The culture time was for two tanks was 36 days, and the stocking density for each tank was 195. The daily feed rate per fish was 0 0.72. The total fish feeds fed per fish is 25.92. The daily feed rate per tank was at 140.40 grams. The initial average body weight was at 8.80 grams for both the tank, tanks 1 and 2. Final average body weight, however, differs for tank 1, 12.86 grams, and for tank 2 is 13.28 grams. The weight gain per fish for tank 1 was at 12.06 grams, while the ta for tank 2, 12.48 grams. The daily weight gain was at 0 0.335 for tank 1 and 0 0.347 for tank 2. Feed conversion ratio for tank 1 was at 2.09 and for tank 2 was at 2.02. .02. Specific growth rate in percent in tank 1 is 7.94% and tank 2, 8.02%. The mortality for tank 1 is lower at 34 compared to the ta tank 2 at 38 pieces. The survival rate for tank 1 was at 82.56% while the tank 2 has 80.51% survival rate. The computation of the investment cost for each test system. Material cost and cost of fish was, is the same for the two system. Uh, however, the cost of biofilter media differs. For, the commercial, for using the commercial biofiltering media, the cost was at 1,984 pesos, while for Utilizing the recycled plastic bottle cups, it was 39 pesos. And the total investment cost of the system for system one was 11,895.74 pesos, while at system two is 9,950.74 pesos. The operating cost for two different systems. The fixed cost were in the depreciation is so you computed using the straight line method at 10% salvage value and five years lifespan. That interest on investment is computed by the 30% of the investment cost. The repair and maintenance is computed by the 10% of the investment cost. The insurance was at 3% of the investment cost. For the electrical energy cost, there the, the it was computed by the HP of 10.63 per kilowatt hour of a one-fourth HP submersible pump at nine hours per day operation. Then the, oper the operating cost for each system for tank for system one it was 1.02 pesos per fish per day, while for system two is at 0.99 pesos per fish per day. So the conclusions. The designed recirculating aquaculture system using two types of biofilter functioned as purpose. The tank two performed numerically differ better in terms of feed conversion ratio and specific growth rate, while tank one had better survival rate. Both systems performed the same in terms of the weight gain of fishes, which was statistically analyzed using the T table test, the T test for two of data. The tank 2 is cheaper due to the low cost material utilized in the form of plastic bottle cups. Since tank 2 incurred the lower, the lower expenses in terms of investment and operating cost, this type of recirculating aquaculture system is recommended. For the recommendations, 
allow the fishes to acclimatize before transferring to growing tanks and ensure the cleanliness of the tank, including the plastic bottle cups, to prevent contamination of water. Increase the weight of recycled plastic bottle cups to be used accordingly and compare if changes in the weight will have an effect on fish growth. Explore the possibilities of lowering down the stocking rate and observe if this would allow faster fish growth or better feed conversion ratio and provide screens as cover to the mechanical filter and some tanks to prevent breeding of mosquitoes. So that's it. Uh, thank you and good day. Thank you, Joe. Now you're ready for some questions no, from our panel. What is the intention of, uh, of your tanks? Is it for growing tilapia for market or uh, as a uh, stocking? Uh, well, sir, as of this moment, uh, because the the study was only conducted for a month, which um, for one month, which um, only um, evaluates the the designed desi design system for the fish tank for only a month. So, if someone maybe if someone will um, continue the study, they could. Um, Grow, gonna grow the fishes for until the production period for them to, you know, to, I know, to harvest. And that's it, sir. So, in other words, um, the conditions that you have uh, made uh, based on the assumptions uh, were not aim towards uh, production yes, of tilapia for marketable uh, size. Yes, sir. Not yet, sir, because it was only conducted for a month, sir. But given uh, the assumption that the size of the tank uh, should be able to accommodate 30 kilograms of marketable uh, yes, sir. tilapia. S yes, sir. Um, the 195 uh, yes, uh, stocking density per tank, um, will that allow uh, that uh, production capacity of 30 kilograms? Yes, sir. It, it, it would Granting allow... Granting you would sir. prolong the production uh, period. Um, it will, maybe, sir, it will be uh, affected by the survival rate of the fishes. So, the, the 30 kilogram per cubic meter of harvesting fish, sir, was only... Um, I based it on um, the reference using the recirculating aquaculture system minimum standard, sir. You see, if I am uh, somebody who is interested in uh, adapting uh, the use of the tank for production of tilapia, um, the present data that you have uh, presented will not be able to convince us that indeed it is profitable to use tank one or tank two, or even the two systems, because uh, we cannot see um, the so-called the turnover, uh, economic return, no, in using the technology. Yeah. Thank you, sir. You made the comparison of two tanks, so there must be a comparative study between the two, and you have your data. Do you have your data? So, you know, it's very easy to, to check uh, which of the tank has uh, a good performance if you have to plot your data on the graph. Yes, so, yes, maybe the color of one is blue, the other is red. red. So, which of the tank is, uh, uh, has a good performance? Okay, so... You know, uh, I've been working with... Uh, a big uh, company for export of uh, uh, aquaculture in Pagasinan, a 100 hectare uh, farm. And they are producing uh, uh, like fingerlings and, uh, you know, uh, feeds for the aquaculture industry. Um, 
Do you have basis of uh, feeding rate of this uh, experiment or? Uh, yes, sir. The feeding rate was according to what we have studied in our aquaculture subject, sir. That the fingerlings should have a, um, the feed rate for the fingerlings is the 30% of the average body weight multiplied by the number of times it is fed per day, sir. So can, can you present that uh, data in your output? Say this is the benchmark. Okay. Uh, which uh, of the scheme has a good performance? Uh, is it in the tank or in a, a lagoon or in a, any other culture pond? Uh, pardon, sir. Uh, you know, before we conduct research, we must have a, a benchmark. Okay. Okay. Uh, this is the available data in a you know in a, in the books and the reference. So. We have to start with sa amuna. You know, if we want to develop Philippines, sundo naton ang ginihimo sa Japan. You know, it's very difficult to improve a country like uh, UK. They developed the country for 100 years. Original sila. But if you copy, yun in patenting, we need to copy and then we have to add on. That is ours. Why kita ng upya? Kaya nga, ato na iya mo. So, ang akon gusto is, you must have a basis, no? May ara na, sa literature, ara na na siya. So, we need to compare sa ato na data, sa inyong result, there is a tank 2 and tank 1 sa existing. So, so that we can have a basis. Ah, mas maayog na ang, ang tilapya is you have to culture with that a stocking density of 195 head no, per cubic meter. Kaya nga, sila na ton, we have to change si muna ton baboy. Ang baboy, dasig sa may dako kung tangkal. You know, ang kinimo na na, na ang gidevelop na sa Pangasinan, the stocking density is 80,000 per 10 by 10 by 7 uh, square meter. Um, um, ang iyang, uh, no, ang iyang uh, volume. So, every month nag-harvest ka, 30 tons ang total. So, 10, 10 tons ang gin-harvest nila. Kaya, uh, kung i-culture mo siya, nag-jutay ang area, ang conversion sa feeds, Dasi ki magdako. Pero kung babayan mo tilapya si Gilagaw, damo sa kaon, dutay sa uh, dutay ang conversion rate niya. So, uh, as ako na is you have to present the benchmark and we need to compare the result of tank 1 and tank 2 to the existing data available in the literature. Okay sir, noted sir. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> the use of uh Plastic cups is, uh, of course, the uh, recycling of uh, waste. But have you tried uh, other alternatives like uh, pebbles no? or uh, sand? Ah, uh, sir, because pebbles, there uh, in some there they all they already use the pebbles, but I haven't. There is no really saying uh, that use the, recy the recycled plastic bottle cups as an alternative medium. There is no data really, sir. So I've used the recycled plastic bottle cups for that, sir, instead of the pebbles, sir. Um, did you compute for the change in the volume of water as the process of recycling? Uh, no, sir. I haven't, sir. The Computed the, uh, so did you assume that uh, the volume of water in the tank did not uh, the, the um the condition of the environment sir was closed maybe there will be um little uh, little evaporation that happened on the water but there was according to what i have uh, observed on the um, study, the water on the tanks and also on the mechanical, the biological filter and the sump tanks did not really um, decrease, sir, as, as to what I have observed on my study, sir. Um, earlier, it, um, it was mentioned that you used two tanks, actually. Yes, sir. Two tanks okay. to compare the data, sir. Yeah, so um, maybe the title can be uh, modified. Evaluation of uh, 
to recirculating aquaculture systems. Okay? You say A, ah, that means uh, only one system, and actually you have two systems. Okay, no I sir. think it's likewise shown in your objective. Right. Yes, sir. Noted, sir. Thank you, sir. Or by dementia comparative. No? So, design, fabrication, and performance, uh, comparative performance evaluation of two circulating. Uh, okay, sir. Comparative. Okay. Because you're dealing with, and data mo, puro comparative, puro. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So why not uh, use comparative because, uh, you know, there are so many studies uh, involving comparative studies and uh, that improves a lot. Okay, sir. So, proceeding ko, uh, you have your baseline. Oh. Tatlo na na ang gua niya. Tatlo. Uh, yes. Baseline, ano ng feeding rate, ano ng stocking density. You have to plot, uh, like for example, the red color, then tank 1, tank 2, then nami na ng imo data. Sige. Thank you, sir. Questions? More questions from the panelists? Or maybe we can... Ah, sige, si Sir Trasado. Gusto rin sa akong culture. Ewan lang ko na entrega, no? Total fish feeds per fish. Per fish, Sir. Yeah. You have 25.92. Yes, Sir. Same for tank 1 and tank 2. Yes, Sir. But there is a difference in terms of mortality. 34 yeah, yes, and 38. Yes, sir. That means that the number of fish in tank 2 has reduced. If you apply the same amount of feed per tank, then uh, the per fish application should not be the same. It was only, sir, to uh, compare, sir, the effects of the design, sir, design uh, recirculating aquaculture system on the fish growth. So it, the, feed, the feeds that was given for the fishes was equal, but the mortality rate was um, different. It is because sir, there are certain factors other than feeds that, um, that causes uh, mortality for the fishes, sir. But in terms of computation, if it is on a per fish basis, then it should not be the same because you have two different uh, fish population per tank because of differences in mortality. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Can we now have, can we entertain questions now for the... May ara pa kamo sir. Okay. Sige, maybe we if you have a uh, audience here, member of the audience who's interested about her study, you may use the mic at the back. Or... Ah, sige ma'am. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon ma'am. Thank you for presenting your paper. Uh, my question is, um, uh, how is the two systems differ from the existing uh, system that is uh, used mostly or commonly used by tilapia growers? How is it different? Yes, yes sorry, ma'am. Uh, um, from the Southeast Asian Fishers Development Center uh, personnel, they, they do not use recirculating aquaculture system the and it's different if there is a recirculating aquaculture system it will my study will be different in terms of the materials that were used because it's lower and um, adding the use you utilize utilization of the recycle uh, recycled plastic bottle cups it it already um, decreases the cost of the system so uh, maybe I can say <laughs> that's it. That'll be quite different from the others, ma'am. Uh, jo, uh, also, uh, ma'am Peretrat is also trying to. Well, we want to know what's the existing. I mean, the usual sapat culture. Uh, 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 so maybe you can elaborate In on that. In tank one. culture, the usual uh, they change the water for every week. Because the fishes are 
in in tanks when you when you were using tanks we increase the um, we increase the stocking density of the fishes to to have more um, prod, 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 uh, products so when when the uh, so, so you mean it would your uh, invention um, would help the uh, growers in terms of the efficiency in changing the water is yes, that ma'am or maintaining the water yes ma'am and don't need to pour some water anymore is that what you're saying yes ma'am because in the usual we they change the water every week for my study i haven't changed it for like a month okay and you use recycled material yes we're recy recycling the water by um um putting it uh Recycling the water by having mechanical filter for the suspended solids and the biofilter for the toxic substances to be okay. okay. So meaning, if uh, say for example you are interested to pursue, if a household for example wants to grow their own tilapia, so they can just set up that in the garage maybe yes, and then. Yes. So, f usually tilapia would grow how many months until harvest? The usual growing for tilapia was three to seven months. So, in your case, it's only one month. It's, it's only one month because I've on I only um um. Asigeta po salang na. Um, I only studied the effects on the fish growth, but if so, further studies will be conducted, then. It it will be possible for I know for like five months they can conduct okay. it. So after one month test, what did you do to the, all those uh, I know? Did you continue <laughs> growing them or did you I, because, terminate them um, all? <laughs> <laughs> the system was um, like I cannot grow them really because my how our house is already not that big. So I got the fishes, and there is only one fish left on on <laughs> in the house. There is only one fish left because of lack of aeration, lack of aeration. <laughs> okay, sige jo. Thank you. Ah, sige one last. I just uh, have to make a comment. You know, congratulations because right now your idea is the solution to the failure of the prone industry. And in Pangasinan, the Thailand people came here as a consultant to design. Sangkin hambal mo na subong. We are all already in the commercial scale. We are exporting uh, tons and tons of uh, aquaculture because of that. You know, sa uh, sa una is a failure because pakaon na tapakaon sa lokon wala kasilias. And it's a failure. Tanan nga disis arada. So the Thai people came here. Mabubra sila kasi liya sa tunga sang pan. That solves the problem sang prone industry. And also, that will solve the problem also sang tilapia industry. With your concept, it's already working. So, ang additional lang sa is you have to design your pan uh, square na siya. Sa tunga, dira ka makakuha sang yung mga discharge. May kasilya sa tonga. You have the aerator, apat kabilog aerator, mabuyong ang tubig by hydrodynamics. All the the solid particles mahulog dito sa kasilyas. You know, you are good because gusto natin i-develop ang aquaculture industry because in the Philippines, aton nga, lapat kita duta, ang Saudi damo sila oil. Aton nga, we have to, to develop the culture industry. And if possible, pwede kita ka support sa ining ng research so that kita mauna dere for this research we have a pond in Saraga so kun pwede ang next naton we have to apply ma'am sa ining research we have to because we we, we have funds it's very uh, gamay lang ng cost naton so ang imo na siya nga, nga concept we have to improve next year then siguro nami na siya kaya we can feed a lot of people because of your design wala na tabalatian because of that thank you Thank you, sir. Okay, Joa, thank you. Makagin hawa ka na. Sige. So, 
So from aquaculture engineering, we proceed to machinery. So if you notice, the five papers are classified into three, aquaculture engineering, machinery, and then the last uh, two topics is about uh, is related to soil and water conservation engineering. So the third presenter uh, would present no, uh, her study entitled Design, Fabrication, and Evaluation of a Cassava Shipping Machine by Desiree M. Arostike. Good afternoon everyone, I am Desiree M. Arostike and this afternoon I will present to you my project study which is entitled Design, Fabrication and Evaluation of Cassava Chipping Machine. Introduction Cassava is one of the major crops in the Philippines. It is used as a famine reserve crop and cultivated by small-scale farmers who rely on subsistence methods of farming and traditional methods of processing. Some farmers usually planted cassava in their farm, but after harvesting, cassava roots are susceptible to spoilage and without any preservation measures, can only be stored for about 48 hours before they begin to deteriorate. So this study therefore attempted to solve the limitation of the availabil availability of this technology on small scale utilization. And this cassava chipping machine is intended to be low in cost but with acceptable efficiency. The objectives of the study, it is to design, fabricate a cassava chipping machine and evaluate its performance. Evaluate in terms of chipping capacity, chipping efficiency, thickness of cassava chips, moisture content of cassava chips, and electric energy consumption rate. And also to analyze its operating cost. The time and place of study. The machine was fabricated at a machine shop located in Molo, Iloilo City from the last week of November to the second week of December 2018. The initial testing and further improvement was, was, was held at appropriate technology center in Central Philippine U University last December 12, to 13, 2018. And the performance evaluation of the machine was evaluated at Appropriate Technology Center in Central Philippine University last December 13 to 17, 2018. The significance of the study. The contribution of this study will be beneficial to small or medium scale farmers to directly process their cassava tubers after harvest to arrest the deterioration of the cassava. Also, to the small business which can help them produce cassava chips for their business and afford a low cost chipping machine. The design criteria of the study, chipping capacity is refers to the capacity of the machine to chip the cassava tuber. And the material used was cassava, which was produced by the farmers. And the power source, which is the machine, is driven by two horsepower electric motor. The design criteria, construction materials, and the machine is made of stainless steel sheets, steel bars, um, round bars, which are locally available. 
manpower requirement, the machine is operated by only one person, by one person to collect and to feed and gather the materials before and after the operation. And the cost, the fabrication cost of the machine is within 15,200 pesos. Methodology. Description of the machine. The parts of the machines are feeding hopper, the body cover, discharge tooth, electric motor, support frame, and this is the push handle. Feeding hopper. It guides the cassava to the chipping chamber to undergo chipping operation. Cutting blades. They are responsible for cutting the cassava at a certain thickness and diameter. The discharge chute, it serves as an outlet for the cheap cassava. This is the principle of operation. There's a video, but... Hindi siya ma-play. So, this video shows that the cassava tuber is fed on a feeding hopper and then it, un it operates a um, chipping operation and it was discharged in a discharge tooth. Oh. The performance evaluation of the study. Three trials were done to ensure the accuracy of the data obtained and it was loaded 5 kilogram of cassava tubers and the time required to be completely cheap was also recorded and samples were collected and subjected to moisture content determination. The instruments used are the plastic bags, weighing scale, to weigh the cassava before and after, and also digital timer to record the time, and tachometer to record the, rate, the RPM of the machine. We also use ruler power meter um, for, the, for the computation of electric energy and the vernier caliper for the thickness of the cassava chips and oven for determination the for the determination of moisture content of cassava chips results this table shows the chipping capacity of the cassava chipping machine and average thickness and Every trials, it has a 5 kilogram, and the, operate, the average operating time was 0 0.07 hour. The shaft speed was recorded 381, and the average uh, shipping capacity was 70.53 kilogram per hour, and the average thickness of the cassava chips was 2.03 millimeter. This table shows the chipping efficiency of the cassava chipping machine. <clears throat> Initial weight was 5 kilogram in every trial and, also, and after that, we weight the sample and the average weight of the sample was 4.98 kilogram and it was computed that the chipping efficiency, the average chipping Efficiency was 99.67%. The moisture content of cassava chips, according to Philippine Agricultural Engineering Standards, in getting the, the moisture content of the cassava chips, you should weigh 100 grams per trial, and each trial it has three replications, and therefore, the average moisture content of the 
cassava chips were 54.05%. The electric energy consumption rate, the average rated power was 2.76 and the average operating time was 0 0.07 hour and computing the electric energy consumption rate which is unit wattage times the operating hour and the average oper electric energy consumption rate was 0.20 kilowatt per kilowatt hour The cost analysis of the machine. The total investment cost was 15,200 and in solving the fixed cost, we have the depreciation. In solving the depreciation, we use the standard, which is straight line method at 10% salvage value and three years of lifespan. And in interest on investment, we count we computed using the standard 24% of investment costs and the repair and maintenance, 10% of the investment costs, and the insurance was 3% of investment costs with a total of 27.89 pesos. And for the variable costs, we solved the electric energy costs using the using the standard 13 pesos per kilowatt hour at 8 hours a day. And for the labor cost, we use 200 pesos per day and with a total of 702.99. And we, in getting the total cost pesos per day, we, I, I add the fixed cost and the variable cost which is total of 730.88. And the operating cost was computed by, based on an operation capacity of 70.53 kilogram per hour at eight hours per day operation, which is 1.30 pesos. Data collection and parameter parameter analyzed. So first, we collected data. We weighed the, we weigh the cassava materials. The chipping time was recorded. Initial weight of the samples are also, and the final weight of the samples. The moisture content of the samples for moisture content determination, amount of electric energy used, and the labor requirements. So the parameter analyzed were chipping capacity, chipping efficiency, moisture content, electric energy consumption rate, and its operating costs. Conclusions. The machine, on average, can chip 70.53 kilogram of cassava per hour with an average thickness of cheap cassava of 2 mm. The chipping efficiency of the machine was at 99%, which is higher than the given chipping efficiency based on the Philippine Agricultural Engineering Standards at 75%. The average electric energy rate was 0.20 kilowatt hour, which costs 702.99 per day. The utilization of the machine at an investment cost of 15,200 pesos would allow an expenses of 1 pesos and 30 centavos for every kilogram of cassava chips. Recommendation. The transmission assembly should have a perforated screen cover for safety purposes. And the feeding hopper must be adjustable to accommodate of size cassava or the cassava to be inserted should be sliced, should be uniform, otherwise it needs to be sliced into half so that feeding of the root crop would not be delayed. And that's the end of my presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Des. Now you're ready for questions no? from our
panelists. We start with Sir Levy. Ah, yes, sir. Uh, please check with your uh, your table uh, table number four, I think. No? That is uh, final weight, siguro ang sa dalong no? initial weight kaya pano butang da. Mga clerical ano lang, iron. Uh, then, uh, sa chipping efficiency, what contributes no, to the decrease in uh, trial 1? Considering uh, trial 2 and 3 is 5-5 uh, and uh, have a uh, efficiency of one, 100%. No? Is there uh, um, on the on the kasaba or on the machine or on the uh, pardon sir uh, what contributes to the decrease in the final weight of your sample in trial one? Oh, sir um the 4.95 okay sir in trial one sir because the anus the the kasaba tuber sir was not uniformly sized, so it affects the the efficiency in trial one. Uh, actually, ang tubers is not really uh, uniform, no? That's <laughs> yes, sir. What Sir Levy is trying to ask is where did the 0 0.05 gram go? <laughs> Why the 0 0.05 difference? What happened during trial one? Could you recall? Uh, or uh, did they fly somewhere else or maybe ma'am because it is not covered ma'am okay. so nag fly away or na pilit sa machine yes sir wala to gin sipot last time ha it was clean ma'am okay sige, sige. Oh. sir uh, sir sonorio uh, same comment, you know, as uh, later you become uh, agricultural engineer and uh, for me, I don't uh, see f uh, the, the figures, I want the, the graph. Assuming you have your RPM, your performance, then your chipping capacity. Assuming if I have a capacity of uh, 20 tons per hour or per day, then how can I size? So, but if you have to plot your data in a graph, then uh, I have to project only, and this is my capacity. Get? So, it's very difficult to read figures. No? I want graph. Because, you know, for presentation, usually you have to present only the, 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 the chart. Then if questions, then you have to, you know, uh, make a, a line, then you have already the figure. So, it's very easy. So just uh, have your data in an Excel, yes, then uh, everything is there. Good. So uh, you have to change the color if you have different trials. Okay, uh, the problem is you have only uh, minimum trial, so you cannot see the actual performance of, your de of the device. So if possible, you have to increase the number of trials so that the, the line graph is more accurate than having a trial of three or two. No? Yes, so you cannot... You cannot expect uh, high accuracy in a small number of trials. Okay, sir. Uh, for efficiency, we are expecting to have 100% efficiency if it is covered. So that is an obvious data. But in other performance parameter, then we want, uh, we want a graph for that. And then uh, you have you were uh, you you flashed the, the for the conclusion that uh, yours is ninety nine percent and the in the pies is seventy five percent. So can you check with that because the your efficiency is the input over the uh, what is that the, the, the weight of the sample, sir, input minus the uncut overs of oh. that. In, so you have the efficiency, but how did how did they come up with the the data to have a seventy five percent in the in other or if that is a standard or 
in some other machines, then uh, maybe you, you have to check uh, with the performance. Okay, sir. Di na kato tong iba na pasulod mo ang 100 kilograms, only 75 percent o 75 kilograms sa magwa. Di na kato ang 25. Kung kaawit ang machine, di sa na. What Maybe. study did you cite for that 75 percent comparison? Uh, I mean, sa market to bala. In PAES, ma'am, it's 75 percent, but in other data, ma'am, it is almost 100 percent, ma'am. In my related literature, it stated that the the efficiency was 99 point something in my related literature. Yeah, but uh, considering that uh, you've done the, the criteria, say input over output, that you have the efficiency. Assuming if you have 100 kilograms of cassava, in sulod mo siya masin, ang imong ang waste is only 1%, din nagkanto na siya. You have to analyze, so, siguro nagpilit ng siya so, the, for the space, no? But uh, considering, say, assuming if I have to mill uh, 1,000 1, tons, you know, the 25% is a, a great loss for the production. So, kung hindi ba lang sigurado, pwede nga eliminate mo lang na siya because you're not sure of that. A lot of people will question paano na siya. And then they will not buy that machine, no? Basi lain ang ilang kapag incindi siya na. Okay, sir. Okay. Um, actually, your machine is uh, better than uh, that pa is uh, standard uh, efficiency, right? Yes, sir. Ilang 75, hindi mo yan 99.67, no? Now, remember this is shipping machine. Um, when you measure your uh, initial weight and final weight, um, the, the final weight was just basically the weight of what you get from the... Um, ano na, sa, it uh, means the cassava, ano, sir, the cassava chips, na sa, sir. Gani, but yes. did you make sure that what you have really measured in the final weight are all cassava chips? not cassava powder or cassava grits? It's all cassava chips, sir. Um, Cut cassava. No chip, it's not the way it's going to be done. But if you have to make sure that you can 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 So basically, if you have to make sure that you can 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 make that what you are producing actually are chips. Hindi nga tinuktok nga, nga kasaba. Then, you see, your machine is called kasaba chip, cheaper. So, dapat your product should be kasaba chips, not tinuktok nga kasaba. Yes, sir. You see what I mean? Yes, sir. Oh, that maybe would explain why those machines that uh, you have cited have 75 percent uh, chipping efficiency because they really uh, make sure that the final output that they have considered based on the efficiency are really chips and not chop kasaba okay sir yes, you, you see what i mean oh sir i get did it. you do that also in your own study Okay, sir, in further studies. Sir. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, also, uh, if you may add, so what is the definition of chipping efficiency in the past? Anyway, is it, uh, do you have to remove it individually or do you just measure the output coming from the discharge chute so that the audience may be uh, uh, cleared on that one? What is the definition of, um, ano, of a chip material? The ratio of the... Chipping efficiency is the ratio of the input materials or samples less amount of the weight and un uncut over the weight of input material times 100. Again, input over the minus the uncut, which is the output. Okay. And so, over so the weight. Okay. Input. So did you also do that in your? In my computation. Yes, oh. yes ma'am. Okay. Um, did you make some comparison of your uh, machine with uh, 
the commercially available uh, chipping machines? As of now, sir, I don't think it has a cassava chipper because when I buy cassava for my testing, it was said that cassava chipper is too expensive. So I made mini cheaper though. that's it. you said that uh, that's not available in in Iloilo lang, sir but how did you say that the uh, cassava mas shipping machine in Iloilo is very city, expensive I mean, sir. but in province sir i mean but there is a commercially available uh, cassava shipping machine so yes sir in other places sir sir so could you not get the data, for example, the shipping capacity, cost of uh, uh, the machine, capacity, so that you can make some comparison? In other countries, sir, the shipping efficiency is so high. Like, the capacity was 60, 60 kilogram per hour. You see, um, feed companies are buying cassava chips. Yes, they're not buying cassava, but they're buying already cassava chips as a uh, feed uh, ingredient. And if there are no uh, uh, cassava chipping machines available locally, how is it that these cassava producers were able to uh, sell uh, cassava chips? By the way, sir, this cassava chipping machine is intended for food, sir, because it is, it is for, cassava is used for human consumption. Not only for human, but also for animals. Yes, sir, I, uh, I know, sir. Okay. But this cassava is for f food as food. Okay. Now, since you've said that this is intended for uh, food processing, have you presented your cassava chips to food processors whether the quality of your chips is uh, acceptable to their uh, uh, specifications? Not yet, sir. Oh, that's another issue because you claim that this is for food processing. So maybe you could have some uh, basis also to, to claim that indeed uh, your output no, can be used by food processors. Sir. What is your criteria in um, saying that it is a chip? Have you considered the powder? Because in the picture, some are not cheap powder ng iban or uh, ground. In okay, so in the picture, so mm -hmm. tanawon mong iban hindi ni chip, no? Kung, so chip must be in uniform in size or shape. Ang iban ni, ano ni siya, no powder na siya. So may, Maybe sa pais na siya. Siguro gin, ginisip niya na ang, ang chips get then may ground, may pino siya. You cannot consider ang pino nga chip. No? So, you must have a uniform standard in calling sa chip. No? Di ba ang chip na ito na langkoy-langkoy git siya? Di kung gagmay, ano tawag mo na? Ang chip. Sir, but uh, I just, ano sir, I just measure the thickness of the cassava chips. Yeah, but uh, what I mean is, uh, kung maghambal ka ba na na chip, lain mo na siya kay chips, di ba? O limba, kung palaba siya, or crosswise. So you have your picture. Others, wala na ka uniform, di ba? So meaning, ang imo ka pag measure is input minus ang uncut. Then, so you have a hundred percent, kung anong sulod ang mo managwa. But we're talking of the quality sang sang chip. Siguro giniisip mo na da, pilakabilog ang, ang langkoy, pilakabilog ang pihak lang siya. Kaya nga, you cannot produce 100% nga, nga chip. Nga, sa punta sina, powder na siya gamay. Hindi mo sa may mga chip, may mga sa powder. Yes, sir. So maybe the, the criteria in, in saying that you can have a 99%, basi naglain na siya as compared to the pais nga, no? nga, nga data. Ang sa ila ito pili nila, then gin kilo nila ang wala ma Ma-chip, kaya nga may powder, gina siya mo. Okay, sir. Uh, try to see your, uh, sa imo nga picture, bala kay iba nila, huwag may nila. Okay, By the way, uh, uh, is the intention really to produce cassava chips as cassava chips as food? Or you will use the cassava chips, dry it, and then uh, 
have been grounded to come up with cassava flour to produce food products? It's not for cassava powder, sir, but for but for food. It just, ano, sir, it's just oven dried for getting the moisture content. Gani ang ginoven dried wang cassava chips? Ang purpose mo nga ibalig ya agid siya as cassava chips o kung ginoven dry mo siya para ang purpose yun ay i-powder siya kag i-process into cassava flour. Kaya kung may cassava flour ka, pwede ka nakahimo cassava cake. Yes, sir. Hindi ba lang? Yes, sir. Amuna siya? Yes, sir. So kung amun ang purpose mo, maski hindi siya literally nga chips git, kung purpose mo lang, gin-reduce mo lang siya for drying, then pwede nang imo nga efficiency. Pero kung inang imog niya lang tawag nga cassava chips like Pringles, Nakita mo ng round nga Pringles, yes, uh, potato chips? Yes, sir. Yan mo ginaya. So, kung mag, hindi na siya mo, mm. hindi na siya part sa produkto nga gina, oh. gusto mo. Okay, sir. Oh. So, ang gina namin Destiny, sir, is that your machine can be a preliminary, well, it's uh, preparatory for another product. Yes, sir. So, since your product would produce a chip, and smaller or bits of uh, cassava, therefore, the chips may be sold as a chip with a higher value. Then the smaller ones could be sold as a material to be processed further into a powder. Yes. Oh, yes. So, pune kung ano ina comment mo ta. <laughs> so, therefore, mom, is the cassava chips is processed powder. Pa. That's all. Sige, saved by the bell na si Desi. Okay, Des, thank you. So, grabe na nga pakulba sa inyo. Okay, thank you, Des. Now we proceed to the last two topics on related to soil and water conservation engineering. So, uh, the next presenter is Kiara Alexandra Biguelin. She will present her study about the design, fabrication, and field test evaluation of a portable stainless partial flume. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Kiara Alexandra Golin. Now I'm going to present my study, which is design, fabrication, and field test evaluation of a portable stainless partial flume. So introduction, water is the essence of life, as I call it, and a catalyst to social economic development in all countries, despite being a critical, critical resource. In 2025, the population is expanded expected to be 8.5 billion by now in 2019 we are past 7 billion in world population all of these people need water for life so different aspects that needs water there is industries construction household and such and all of us compete for the needs of water so with uh, um um of course agriculture especially irrigation which is the artificial input of water in your farming system of course with, without irrigation farming is very limited as in cases that rainfall is lesser than 30 centimeters we can say that irrig farming or agriculture without irrigation is nearly impossible this study aims to aid farmers to have good water measurement which also results or render to a ma good water ma management and be efficient with their available water for this reason it was proposed to make a portable Stainless partial flume to aid the said proposition. Okay, portable stainless partial flume, um, a device used to measure the volumetric flow rate of the water in an open channel flow with, of course, a relate to its depths of water, which can be found at the converging section and throat section, which we'll let, later we'll talk about in the next slides. So objectives. A general objective is to design and fabricate a portable stainless partial flume and evaluate its performance in the field. Our specific um, object objectives is to install in an open channel flow and of course um, measure the volumetric flow rate by the partial flume, verify the volumetric flow rate made of, me volumetric um, flow rate of water, which of course using another a method which is the float method which I chose and next is 
determine that you received the flume, which, of course, comparing these two methods with the declared um, efficiency of the flume, which is utilized or installed in a field condition within a 2 to 5% efficiency, and of course, compute its constructing cost. Significance of study, as it is beneficial to the farmers and farmers' irrigation organizations that monitors the water flow of their irrigation system, um, especially when farmers do the crop or scheduling of irrigation system. And next is beneficial in calibration of irrigation canals and division boxes and to calibrate um, con conservation structures instead uh, and to econ economize the cost of instead installing the flume itself, you just have to calibrate the canals and the division boxes or the turnouts that exist in the irrigation systems of a farm. Beneficial to agencies which field works revolve in water management. Time and place of study, field testing and evaluation. Um, this was done at the in Barangay Pagsangaan, Pavia Iloilo, in January 4, 2019, would of course help and um, really, really, relation with the uh, Palakatian Irrigators Group. Um, Palakatian, which means Pagsangaan, Lanit, Kabugao, Anilaw, and Tigom. And the device was fabricated at a place in Molo, Iloilo City, from last week of October to first week of November last year, 2018. So methodology, the design criteria was based in this four construction materials, which the far partial flume said to be built and I was built in a stainless material, which are locally available, stainless steel plate and stainless square, square tube, a manpower requirement, which requires one to two persons that consists um, of work um, forming the embankment and also back and forth manip manipulation or steering of the head of the head gate or the sluice gate of the irrigation irrigation system. And next is the site, which is, of course, the, u the intended use of partial flume, which site is supposed to be in the irrigation, irrigation earth canals, open channel flow, with preferable with a uh, head gate, and of course, the cost. Description of the device. The, there are three uh, major sections of the flume, with the converging section, the inlet, as the arrow points the entrance of the f f of the flowing water through the flume, the middle um, the middle section throat and diverging section the outlet of the f water in the flume. Other parts were the primary measurement or each A that is placed at the converging section, spirit level, and of course the secondary measurement or H V. Converging, converging section. This serves to collect and channel the flow into the throat of the flume. So, with the help of embankment that is placed at the um, parallel to the sides of the inter, inter points of the converging section, embankments were made that were, that help that help um, the conveyance uh, the conveying water to enter only through the converging section. This this is where the subcritical flow happens at the upstream in the convergent section. Next is the throat section. It's the narrowest portion of the flume and where the flow is accelerated from sub to supercritical flow by means of change in elevation or the critical flow. Next is divergent section. This is where the energy or the flow, uh, the flow of water dissipates across the width of the canal. This section minimizes the downstream scar and expands the flow back into the channel. Um, spirit level, this has three levels, the horizontal, vertical, and of course, 45 degrees, ensures the installation of devices leveled. It was positioned at the top part of the throat section horizontally. Staff gauges, these are the measurement for the depths of the surface water. Um, only HA, or our primary measurement, will only be considered when the flow condition is free flow. And two of the, these measurements, uh, two of these point of measurements, are involved when the flow is called to be submerged. So we have um, the indicators of these two conditions are based on the hydraulic jump. When we when see um, free flow is called to be is called to be um, and the condition is called to be free flow when the submer when the hydraulic jump just below the downstream of the flow throat is is not submerged, wherein a submerged flow is where the hydraulic jump downstream is submerged. 
So next, the handle. It provides easy handling for the portability of the flume. Also serves as bracing of the end and bending points of the three sections named above. So description of area for flume testing. Of course, the um, primary intended um, field work, uh, work of or function of the flume is for agriculture irrigation, which is supposed to be installed in an irrigation canal, and of course, a head gate, and to ensure that the area or irrigation canal used was uniform. And of course, this creation of area for flood, flood method, where also, of course, um, free of vegetation, upstream and downstream, it was placed 10 meters below, uh, downstream from the flume. And the highest point, or the main gauge the we, uh, main gauge designed in the cross section established was the highest point of 80 centimeters, and there were interval uh, interval distances of 10 centimeter, wherein a change of height in water can already um, calculate the total area for the float method. Next, the operation of the partial flume. First, um, we closed the head gate to its mini, uh, minimum capacity where in a water can flow into the irrigation canal. Next, we um, made a temporary dike and installed the flume um, parallel to the conveying or parallel to the direction of the conveying water. And we installed it using the level, uh, spirit level. Next, we um, um, apply or establish uh, embankments using cement sacks or earth materials. And in between of it, we we embank soils between, between and ensuring a, le, a less seepage possibilities. And downstream, we made the float method, which is later to ensure the accuracy of the partial flume. The performance evaluation, there were 10 tests um, made. The test is recorded after the manipula manipulation or steering of the head gate or the sluice gate. The water condition was defined by the sub submergence of the hydraulic jump. Water source, volumetric flow rates are measured for two conditions and the testing of the machine with the declared efficiency of a machine in a, installed in a field conditions of two to five percent. Um, data collection and parameters analyzed. First, uh, first is the depth at HBHA, length of run, time, timing of the object floating from the known points of this length of run, Used, used for the float method, and of course the width and depth of the method cross method, adapts at float method cross section. Parameters analyzed were the submergence transition ratio, volumetric flow rates for two different methods used, and accuracy of the flume and the constructing cost. Instruments used were the digital timer, shovel, salmon sacks, um, water level used to level the two posts of the flume uh, of the of the two posts in establishing the float method are the steel stakes, segmented strings which are segmented in 10 centimeter intervals, and of course the steel rule. Results, there were uh, results and partial, uh, results and volumetric flow rate and partial flume. There were a total of 10 tests. With at first three tests, there were zero percent of submersion, submergence transition due that the HB were there were no height that HB were observed for these three trials that rendered to a zero percent submergence. All of these um, tests were under that the free flow condition having the highest at the, having the highest of 58.89. 58.89% of submergence transition were in, in a six inch throat flume. There is only allowable of 60% um, transition ratio, uh, or else there will be need, need and for correction due to the, to the submerged flow. And our high, high least volumetric flow rate were 5.879 times 10 raised to negative 3 and cubic meters per second, and the high, highest of 0 0.075 cubic meters per second. For the float method, where in the number of tests is also 10 and increasing in ascending position, with the total least total area of 0 0.025 and the highest of 0 0.2, 0 0.291 square meter. And of course, our this um, data were also in directly proportional as a change of area 
so is to the velocity and also to the volumetric flow rates. Next is the <coughs> percent difference in knowing the accuracy of the partial flume, which in, we considered as a, with respect to the, result, uh, to the value of the flume compared to the float method, which is um, compa compared to the float method um, conducted in the same water, same water condition or same source of water. Um, there were t at, for the first five tests, it is within to the known or to the known efficiency of a flume of two to five percent, having a least value of four point two five at test five, and the highest of five point forty four for five point forty four for the fa first five trials. At the remaining trials of there were a high. Um, having a 27.31%, 43.85, and of course, the last test having the highest most of percent difference of 61.05%, because this test per, were conducted, and there were disturbance that occurred at the moment, at the moment we reached at the height of eight, 20 centimeters in our primary measurement, um, primary point of measurement, which the embankment of the flume could no longer dis withstand the pressure or or at the seepage of the canal. Next is the constructing cost, which the total cost is total forty percent of the total cost was the labor cost, and that ten percent of the total material cost were are or um, contingencies, which rendered to a total cost of 12,630. So conclusions, the design portable partial flume can be used as an accurate farmer level device in measuring the volumetric flow rate of the water in an open channel. This device may be utilized in the management of irrigation water. The cost of constructing the device is about 13,000, making it durable. And the recommendation is a guide for detachable wing wall or somewhat a holder that could use such as that detachable wing wall that could use to hold materials such as metal plate or plywood may be added to adjust them to the entrance point of the converging section. In the setting of the partial flume in an open channel, embankments should be properly placed and sealed to minimize inaccuracies in the, me in the measurement of the volumetric flow rate. So thank you. That is all. Thank you, Kia. So now we will have our panel of, of evaluators for their questions. Uh, you have a very good data presentation. You have a graph. Uh, the color is orange for the partial flume and uh, blue for the float method. Now, assuming if I'm just an ordinary farmer who doesn't know fluid mechanics, how can you convince me that I have to invest 13,000 pesos for your partial flume than uh, using the float method? Um, actually, sir, I would not, uh, I would not really um, pursue for a single local farmer. I would rather, um, uh, uh, rather pursue it to convince a l irrigators association because 13,000 is high for for a local farmer to to invest, but um, in in terms of water, of course, when they do scheduling, uh, knowing the volumetric flow rate or the accurate flow rate that comes in into the irrigation canal, you know the volume, or uh, you know your area, you know your volumetric flow rate, you know the water requirement of your crop, you know how long will you or let your um, gates or the farm ditches open, so you know. Um, the members from the members inside the irrigators association would know would have they're having an equal share of water, sir. <clears throat> Assuming uh, I don't know the irrigation uh, uh, volume for a hectare or a hundred hectare, uh, you know that there's uh, irrigation volume for every hectare, right? Yes. Now, how can you convince me that I have to? Uh, to invest no? uh, in the the stainless, the cost is 13,000 pesos. Yes. So, you know, in, in other countries like in Japan, uh, you have to provide accurate water for that crop. 
Okay? So, assuming, kung ako abi, mabakal ako sina, and I know that if I have to use your flume, then I have my uh, sustainable supply of water with a precise volume, then what is 13,000 pesos if I can produce 1,000 bags of rice or product? So, uh, the problem is, paano, paano mo i-convince? Paano mo to doon ang farmer? Because it's good for you, you know uh, how to use that. So, ano, anong ma ma-convince mo or sa mga farmer, bala, paano mo siya i- paano mo i-introduce sa imo product na mabakal gid? Or else, kung wala man lang sa gamit, hindi mo ma-introduce, hindi nalang kami magbakal. Oh, sir, if you're after a precision, ah, oh, yes, Pre precise, um, Siguro, sir, um, if when you you have sufficient water, but of course, there's uh, there's also a thought of being efficient with your available water, sir, in what you input in your farming systems. But knowing that the, that the flume really is a uh, high cost, having a thirteen thousand, but I think it's worth it's worth if you're if. You're concerned for your water, water, and water conservation, water conservation, and being inefficient in your uses. You mean so water management? Yes, ma'am, water management. Okay, okay Sir Levy. Um, The area is uh, under the irrigation association, no? Sa yes, sir. Pagsangaan. So have you have you uh, tried to present the result with the? Uh, no, sir. I haven't. So um, are the association uh, convinced the result of this study? For there yeah. are there are uh, concrete. Uh, flumes, no? There, there the, were no uh, flumes installed, sir. Actually, sir, there, the, um, of, of course, upon conduct, the conduct of the study, we were actually, um, of course, advisors have an, conversed with the farmers in the vicinity. They were actually having uh, complications when it comes to scheduling because there were uh, con um, water, uh, um, the water source was from the dam, from Baasin. And the gates were open. Um, sometimes uh, the schedules for these gates to open were not constant. Sometimes um, at the certain places, there's for just one week, just one week, one week, they'd open, close, and open. Sometimes there were, um, that, that's a problem when it comes to irrigation, the share of irrigation, because they don't know, uh, they don't have the data, or they don't have the data, uh, yes, the data on how much water they'll need to they'll be needing to input in their farm areas because usually uh, water is not really sufficient no? yes. uh, area so uh, um, i think uh, farmers would <laughs> would not need uh, to measure it because uh, it's insufficient no yes sir so you think, yeah, the water is sufficient, or do you think a partial flume would answer, or maybe one solution for the mechanization of agricultural operations? Uh, actually, ma'am, in my thought, I actually see water as the most, uh, okay, natural element, uh, natural, um, most important element of nature, but it's also one of the most taken for granted. We, we see this as sufficient for now, but sometimes if we became efficient, of the of are you utilization of water maybe we, maybe mom it's i know uh it's maybe a small thing that we really miss look that mom, of of actually solving the solution i having a solutions so you mom. think it's a uh, would improve or would lead to the mechanization of irrigation operations with the use of a flume could be, ma'am, but actually, it's, uh, uh, yeah, could be, but... In what way? Mommy, you'd know, if you have data, you'd know that you have uh, water, west, uh, mga wastes of water, ma'am. You'd know how much you're wasting water, knowing you have sufficient for now, 
knowing having a partial flume and your um, drainage, or you'll be aware of how much you're losing water or how much. Um, you know. um, so, for example, um, there's a communal irrigation system, and you're recommending that uh, maybe the association can uh, acquire one um, to rationalize water distribution and not individual farmer. Now, can you give us a scenario how the flume would be used in, uh, among farmers in a communal irrigation system? In rotational irrigation, sir, for example, um, uh, in an area where there, or for example, there were three areas, different, uh, different in size, different, of course, in your, um, knowing also your water requirement, knowing also your volumetric flow rate, you'd know, and given that there are only seven days allotted by Dania from, in opening your head gate from the main source, you'd know how much, uh, area A would open her, his gate, and you know when, and up until what time he closed it. Uh, for that, for until time, um, the gate for um, area B would be available, and so on to area C. Sir. So, how are you going to use the flume? By calibrating, sir, the irrigation canal or division boxes. After calibrating um, partial flume in an irrigation, the um, the depths at uh, the depth of water surface from the from the partial flume will correlate or will relate to the the height of the division box. Knowing the height from the division box will have an equal amount of volumetric flow rate sir, entering into your service area. So you're not going to put in place the flume. Yes, sir. That's one way to also economize the cost of not actually installing the flume itself, but actually using the flume to calibrate your conservation structures and irrigation systems. So there are five farmers in the association. They are, they are taking turns of uh, using the water. Yes, sir. So the flume will be transferred from one farmer to another? No, no sir. Um, there could be um, a, a choice to have a division box, like a contract, no, sir. Division, division box to, to which you would enter into your farm areas. Knowing at the height of what a surface, height of the water surface from the division box, there's an equal amount of the discharge of water because you have already calibrated it mm. using the partial flume. Okay. So there's no need, sir, of an actual installing partial flume. So one time use only for, for yeah, uh, yes, the sir. water flume. Right, one time use only. Once you have already calibrated the canals, then uh, no need for the flume. Oh yes, is that so, Kiara? I mean, what Doctor Desara is trying to say is that you have your flume, then you have your division box. So would it be possible that your partial flume would just be there? No, your partial flume is there to monitor, diba? Your yes. the the purpose of the machine is of the device is that at a certain height that would be the discharge, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yes. yes. Uh -oh. So, Amuna, that is why I am asking you that question. It, it could have, uh, you could have misunderstood it. But, uh -oh. uh, to answer uh, Dr. Tsang's question, so uh, you have your flume, then you have your division box. So, but, you don't need to remove your flume. Diba? Uh, yes. Or I don't know. But you can, you can actually use it at your drainage, mm -hmm. drainage systems, ma'am. You can install it after uh -oh. the division box? Are you, uh, 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 after calibrating the division box, you can also use it in your drainage systems. But uh, that's the reason of um, having a portable partial flume. Because she is asking about the practicality of okay. getting that flume, transferring it into another lateral canal, for example, just to measure it. So would it be possible that the partial flume would just be there, then you have your different... It's possible. Uh, Sublaterals or sub canals in the area. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> because we want to be, you know, the the audience is also interested to know how would you be you'd be convinced, no, of uh, having that irrigation device at an irrigator's level with that price. Uh. Mm -hmm. well, you see, the scenario is. 
For example, uh, the practicality of um, the technology. The, the, the farmer will be using it to um, effectively use water. Say, um, the use of irrigation would last, say, for example, overnight. So you put your flume in there. Yes, sir. Yeah. Could be. Then the following morning, it's gone. <laughs> That's portable stainless. Uh, value is 13,000. <laughs> Uh, last question. Uh, assuming if I have a 20 hectare farm, and if the the rate is one liter per second, uh, say I have to install that flume, then uh, there are how many hours that I have to irrigate or let your flume uh, operate to deliver uh, one liter per second per hectare one per day? Can we make calibration on the ore gauge on your flume so that we can automatically uh, compute for the number of hours? Assuming may graduation dapat sa flume. Alimbawa, kung sa one abi ang discharge is 10 liters per second. So assuming, if I have a 20 hectare farm, kung ang akong kinanglan is 1 uh, liter per second, so 20 liters per second ang kinanglan ko, nga tubig. Then how can I utilize? Di na siya nga part sa flume, ang 20 liters per second. No, sir. Uh, um, wait now. Actually, it's it's not, it's you don't get to decide, sir, what kind of, uh, how what is the level of discharge. You, by partial flume, sir, you're the one you're going to manipulate the head gate. Of course, if you have a water, a one liter per second, sir, you say, and then <clears throat> you, um, there is a standard or table from a partial, uh, a high to partial flume that relates to the amount of discharge. There are a lot of tables, sir, that you can actually relate um, actual height of the partial flume. So, so meaning you have the graduation in the flume, sir. May kuret kuret na siya may graduation. Ah, yes, sir. They, um, okay. Staff gauge, sir. So, we say that Q equals to area times velocity. Mm -hmm. So, if, uh, say, there's a graduation of 2 cm, mm -hmm. then there's a co corresponding discharge mm -hmm. of yes, sir. so many liters per second. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yes, sir, there is. So, it can be done. Yes. Uh -huh. yes so, let's say my specific need the si irrigation. So, you can just go back to the different gradations, yeah, uh, 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 measurements of no, the flume. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Questions from the audience? This is an interesting topic because flumes are seldom studied in irrigation. Usually, it's just the weir. So, time is up. Thank you, Kiara. Si Kiara, gali amon nga raining Miss Pisabe, Mr. Misaya. <laughs> Okay, so we're down to the last presenter. So this is another topic related to irrigation and soil and water conservation. And also, she did a field uh, test of an existing technology installed at the Department of Agriculture. So uh, let's welcome JVP Tenefrancia. Uh, she will present her study about the field performance evaluation of the solar-powered irrigation project in Barangay Hamungaya, Haro, Iloilo City. So, good afternoon everyone. Today, I'm going to present my study entitled Field Performance Evaluation of the Solar Powered Irrigation Project in Barangay Hamungaya, Haro, Iloilo City. So, the introduction. Solar-powered irrigation is a technology that has been seldom used in an effective way by developing countries. Gasoline is used as a source of energy for pumping of water needed. So, at present, farmers are using gasoline energy for them to enable them to transmit water from the source into the reservoir. A replacement of gasoline as a as energy for solar as a source of energy is necessary. So water pumps powered by solar panels bring an environment-friendly fr water supply solution in the country. So the need for solar-powered pumps in irrigation has been undeniable since agricultural areas have high solar irrigants and water requirements for livestock 
and especially for crops. So solar energy uses an energy source that is consistently available according to the Sai and Mishra of 2015, and it is time to make wise choices in irrigation to minimize the water losses. So what is solar-powered irrigation project? The solar-powered irrigation project is a modern irrigation system that helps boost agricultural and remove operating costs altogether. It has different major functions and advantages, such as no fuel required, durable requiring minimal maintenance, makes irrigation possible in remote areas and environment friendly. So the solar powered irrigation project has the following major functions such as pumping of irrigation water, improving access to water and having no greenhouse gas emission. So objectives. The general objectives is the field performance evaluation of the solar powered irrigation project in Barangay Hamongaya Haro, Iloilo City. So the specific objectives is to determine an actual discharge during the dry and wet season at different scenarios. So we have 7 a.m., 12 p.m., and 5 p.m. Second is to evaluate in terms of the different parameters, the discharge, the water horsepower, and the brake horsepower. And finally, to analyze by comparing the data collected and information gathered. Time and place of the study. So field performance evaluation was conducted at Western Visayas Agricultural Research Center in Barangay Hamongaya, Haro, Iloilo City. So the dry season test was conducted last May 9 to 13, and the wet season test was conducted last August 19, 23, last year 2018. So significance of the study. Significant long-term cost savings Productivity increases in times of needs where there is no available water and minimal labor or maintenance cost and can result to higher productivity, specifically for farmers. Next is the community surrounding could utilize the water in, ter in, the fo in their farms for field use or other applications where water will be useful for them. Next, it is an environment-friendly technology which has smaller environmental footprint. So the methodology, description of the project area. So the present location of the project was one, approximately one kilometer and 300 meters from the main office of the Department of Agriculture. So located approximately at the north, 122 degrees, 34 minutes and 37 seconds east longitude, and 10 degrees, 46 minutes and 37 seconds latitude. So generally plain area, surrounded by rice field where it is used to supply adequate amount of water. So the existing pump house and the solar power modules are enclosed with a fence plant of a total area of 720 square meter. Also, the reservoir is located 10 meters away from the existing pump with an area of 42 square meter and a, and a depth of 2.5 meters. So the project area in the A, the reservoir of the project and on the letter B is the solar power modules and the existing pump house enclosed in a fence plan. So the description of the project. So the project has the solar modules, the mounting structure, the submersible solar pump, control unit, the pipes, reservoir and also steel gates. So submersible solar pump. So submersible solar pump is a hermetically kind of pump that is submerged in the water. Based on, this, on the system, it's a pump running on electricity generated by photovoltaic panels available from collected sunlight as opposed to grid electricity or diesel run water pumps. Solar power modules. Solar power modules are flat, large piece of equipment that used to create energy. So based on the study, the solar power modules have 4,000 watt peak. It has a silicon cell which absorbs sunlight as a source of energy. So in addition, the solar power modules are made of polycrystalline. Next, control unit or level controller. It is used to monitor the generated energy electricity of the solar power modules. When pump is running, the input power is shown. 
Next is the reserva. It is a large area for the storage of water supply. The mounting structure, it used to support and elevate the solar power modules. It is supposed made of a 3-inch diameter GR, GI pipe scheduled 40 with welded 0.3 meter by 0.3 meter by 8 mm, thick base plate and stiffer as per plans. Pipes. First, in the first picture, the riser pipe is a one and one half inch diameter galvanized iron, and the next picture is the delivery pipes from the pump to the reservoir with a two inch diameter high density polyethylene or HDPE. Next is the steel gates. Steel gates are considered as the one of the components of the project, but it can be also considered as an accessory. So, it is a galvanized iron, angle bars, or metal plates cleaned from rust and primed with red oxides. So, principle of operation. So, first, the solar power modules collect or harness the sun's light or heat, then it convert and convert it into an energy that runs the submersible pump and delivers or transport water from the water source into the reservoir. Also, the generated power can be monitored using the control unit. Next, the performance evaluation. Different tests at different scenario of the time, specifically the 7 a.m., 12 p.m., and 5 p.m. of the day per six trials. Tests were conducted for five consecutive days, both for the dry season and the wet season, by catching water using plastic pail for a total of 10 seconds duration. Next, measuring a beaker to get its volume. So, instrument used. First is the plastic pail. On my, on the, on the, on my study, I used a plastic pail which has a capacity of 15 liters, a beaker for the measuring of the volume, steel rule for measuring the area, and this stopwatch for, for measuring the time. So data collection and parameters analyzed. So first, the static suction lift SSL, or SSL, the static discharge head or SDH, but unfortunately, the Department of Agriculture already provided me the total dynamic head, which is the kind of helpful because it it shows the ano, the 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 worst scenario that the system could get then the discharge of water then the horsepower which are the water horsepower and the brake horsepower so the results so the average discharge for the dry and wet season. So the mean discharge for the three scenarios of time on consecutive five, five days of measuring is 1.634 liters per second. And for the wet season, we have 1.668 liters per second. So with the computed parameters, the discharge liters per second on dry season, we have 1.634. For the wet season, 1.668 liters per second. So that the total dynamic head from the <laughs> Department of Agriculture, 45 meters, the computed water horsepower, so water horsepower is can compute, can computed with a Q or the discharge times the total dynamic head over 76. Then the pump efficiency is 40%. It is the minimum pump efficiency. And the brake horsepower uh, for the dry season is 2.41 and wet season is 2.46. It can be computed using the formula of brake horsepower is equal to water horsepower over the pump efficiency. So specification and the design of the solar powered irrigation project. So for the solar power modules, we have the dimensions of the panels. The length is 1.73 meters, width is 2.89 meters. The number of modules is 15, but for their computation, they calculated that they needed 12 or 11 only solar panels. Then, what peak per panel is 250? Numbers of solar panels in series is five. Numbers of solar modules in parallel is three, and tilt angle or the degrees is 11. So for the specification of submersible pump, 
we have 2% HP rating. The capacity of the submersible pump is 40 cubic meter per day, and the total dynamic head is 45, and pump efficiency, which is the minimum, is 40%. So the conclusion. The actual water discharge of 1.634 liters per second for dry season and 1.668 liters per second for wet season, which was compu computed satisfied the water duty requirement of 1.4 liters per second and 0 0.8 liters per second given by the Department of Agriculture. That can be seen on the page 19 of the paper. Next is the number of soil mod modules compensated the needed wattage to run the submersible pump for 12 hours to supply the water requirement for 2 hectares per day service area for dry and wet season. The computed brake horsepower of 2.41 HP and 2.46 HP for dry and wet season does not satisfy the 2 HP rating of the submersible pump. However, brake horsepower was computed using the minimum pump efficiency of 40% and which could be increased when certain factors will be applied, for example, adding the number of solar panels. Recommendation. So there is a need to conduct economic evaluation such as IRR of return, IRR rate, internal rate of revenue or IRR, benefit cost ratio or BCR, and payback period for rice production, and added high-valued crops, and to determine its via viability. Next is to study on how the setup of the solar power modules projected in the field to the site area of the project. Next is the project can be recommended on different agricultural area based on the site criteria given by the Department of Agriculture, Bureau of Soil and Water Management. So thank you and good day. Yes, sir. You mentioned that the you're using polycrystalline uh, solar module and the efficiency is fourteen uh, percent, right? The pump efficiency, sir, is. I'm 40. talking of the panel. Yes. You you mentioned the material is polycrystalline and the efficiency is fourteen percent, right? Okay. Uh, can you explain to me uh, what is the difference? Why you have uh, a discharge of 1.634 during uh, dry season and uh, during which season you have 1.668 liters per second. So on the result, we have 1.634 liters per second for the dry season. It is because it is because the water level maybe for the summer is low while the for the wet season is higher it is a 1.668 liters per second because it is a season for wet you mean high water level high water level sir so meaning the water table uh, during summer uh it's low compared to the wet season. Okay. It has a high water so table. So there's a difference in elevation, right? Yes. Okay. Would, would not that affect the total dynamic head? Because you use the same total dynamic head both for the wet and the dry season. Considering the total dynamic head, using the 45 meters is the the worst scenario that could be computed, so having that minimum or the longer longer total dynamic head could could get a result of a what power for the motor for it is safe uh, you know during summer you the the elevation is somewhat uh, lower yes. as you mentioned uh, the total dynamic head will be affected because you see. As the as it is drawn by the by the pump, uh, you have the elevation uh, to be lower, yes. and uh, the total dynamic head uh, increase. Uh, so, the power consumption is higher as compared to the the one with a, a, a higher elevation. So, have you considered the the change in the head in computation? I did not consider it that. 
changing of the total dynamic heads or for my study. Uh, what is the, the difference in elevation? Because considering kung summer, ang atong tubig, ang water table, ka panaog, dalom, ang atong nga, ang, ang head na atong mas, ano, mas, so, if you, the head is higher than during wet season, meaning you are consuming more power. Kaya nagdalom siya, mabugat. Pero kung yung competition is almost same, may problema. Kaya nga atong nga, water power equals to flow rate of water, gamma of water times height. If you reduce or you increase ang imong uh, head, then may diferensya na. Okay, sir. So kindly check. Yes, sir. No, then, sir. In your uh, trial for the wet season, yes. uh, this is straight five days? Yes, sir. Straight five days. There is no rain? No, sir. Oh, so you're fortunate. Why we nagulan? Right? Sir. Because uh, if it had rained, you will not have this uh, figures. There is no, yes, sir. Yeah, there because, is no uh, data. Because there is no battery. Yes. Okay. Um, how come that even at 5 to 6 p.m., uh, you still have uh, discharges? Yes, sir. There is, sir. Because the pump runs from 6 a.m. in the morning until 6 p.m. in the afternoon, late afternoon. Yes, sir. We have observed there. Um, sige, wala pa man sila. Ako na lang. So, for the audience, man. So, you used a pump efficient, the minimum, which is 40%. Did you, why did you not try to compute also the maximum and then the mid um, efficiency? For comparison's sake. What's the maximum value? For the pump efficiency, the maximum pump efficiency is 75%. That's almost, so, the, the, the difference. So, 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 40, and then 75, and then also maybe the mid, yes. median or mid value. Because using 40% of pump efficiency could safer for the competition. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, assuming you produce rice, uh, what is the cost of solar pumping as compared to diesel or gasoline per uh, kilogram of rice or per sack of rice? Din mas mahal solar, gasoline, or diesel? Water pump. Thank you for the question, sir. But unfortunately, that is a part of my recommendation. <laughs> the internal revenue and the payback period and the BCR or benefit cost rate. But uh, you have the cost, right? Yes. So can you not make some comparison with? Pa check the sa DA. Because uh, if you say that uh, it is economical to use solar pumping, then we can introduce. Mm -hmm. But if you will say, what is the purpose of your study, mm -hmm. no, to come up with the cost, right? Yes. Because you done, you done that already. Mm -hmm. Why is it that um, you introduce solar pumping if you have not uh, done the cost? Mm -hmm. You know, we're talking here of cost comparison. Kung barato ang solar, then mas solar kita. Mm -mm. Right? Yes, sir. But according to my study, uh, um, li related literature and what I have read, the system could last 10, year 10 years to 20 years of the system. So if you, if you compare the increasing demand of, these, of the non-renewable resources, the increasing demand and the increasing amount and the decreasing supply of the non-renewable resources, maybe it could be helpful for it could be helpful for us to to provide or to promote this kind of system. Questions from the audience? But that's a good suggestion, no? so that the farmers would also have a baseline, whether it's really cheaper to use the one that is promoted by the government or maybe the shallow tube well or the, the one that is uh, powered by uh, internal combustion engines. So from agriculture engineering students, any questions? Sa EM? Si Sir Dusaran, may pamangkot ko si Sir. 
Um, this is always um, an issue when we talk about um, solar panels. Yes, sir. Because um, you also uh, reduce the usefulness of uh, land as a natural resource in production. Like, um, if you don't have the solar panels, the space covered by the solar panels can still be used for production and maybe pay for your gasoline or diesel. Yes, sir. Maybe. Can you not utilize so, the under portion of the, where the solar panels are? Is it safe to utilize the land area for... Or you just let it as an area where the solar panels are and then no more use no sangdalom. So on what I have observed on the area, it is a an area where the old cars are being placed, parts of cars at okay. the back of the area. So they may be utilized the area for for supplying water for the agricultural crops there. Yeah, I have noticed it's kind of uh, elevated. No, I, I think uh, it's quite higher than the solar panel installations that we have observed in San Carlos, no? um, which is kind of, uh, of low. No? Um, so maybe that's possible that you can use the space in between the panel and the ground for something like storage or... Uh, Maybe raising uh, chicken. Uh, or it could be mounted no? so on the existing uh, structures in the area. Instead of allotting a certain space intended for the solar panels, ako na lang nagsabasupo ni I mean, ako ni opinion, what about yours? <laughs> for the, no? And the use of the, the area. Uh, the maximization of the space, no? For okay, the question of Dr. Dusaran is, uh, ang concern is that if you have a solar panel, then it might be that that area would not be utilized anymore for crop production. So any other observations that you have seen where the area can still be utilized for crop production or maybe other... Uh, alternatives on how to maximize the potential of the land even though you are you, you are utilizing the area for solar panels I don't know mom but but maybe the reason of of installing this kind of project maybe the Department of Agriculture are proposing or promoting this kind of project so instead of using that land for agricultural production they intended to install that system like for example the one in the picture what's the use of that land area that land area is supposed to is intended for the installation of the solar powered irrigation project i mean ang dalong bala wala na na siya use mm, there's none no. so motong pamangkot ni sir dosaran is it, it is only intended for the project or the system alone sige sir levy uh the design is um, the same with the uh, design plus and the ang na distribute subong sa mga farmers uh, organizations um the same gina siya ang setup or uh, different have you interview or observe other uh, designs ang uh, solar designing solar powered irrigation is based on the actual location of the project so I did not saw any flyers or promoting flyers for the other other ideas for the solar powered irrigation project. Uh, I am confused. Uh, you mentioned here your forty percent efficiency. Yes. Wala ka nag measure sa imo data for the actual output because uh, efficiency of pump right now is seventy percent. If you if you're using 40% then halos wala sang amo ni nga pump kay uh, wala sa mga advanced na may ara gani 90% nga pump. So if you're using 40% and you do the computation then do hindi siya takto. Have you measured the discharge of the of the this 1.66? Can measure mo no can compute. 
that is the main discharge, sir, for these six trials per day and for the... Pero gin-compute mo na siya or yes, gin-salod gin, mo siya? Computed, sir. That is the main discharge. But, but this is a, a, a project. Why ka gin-nag-try saludan baldi o ano? Ara, sir, sa, bali, sir, ano? Oh. Ang part of the the trial is six for the one day of one day have seven three scenarios seven a.m. twelve p.m. and and five p.m. so in one scenario we have seven it is like twenty to twenty five liters per second so if you divide it into the ten seconds duration we we will come up with a two point something liters per second. Then how about the efficiency? Paano na determine efficiency? I use the minimum pump efficiency, sir, because it is safer for using the minimum pump efficiency as suggested. If you use 90%, then what happens? Maybe the the maybe the motor HP rating would be would. Be Have you asked the, the supplier if this is really the efficiency of the pump for solar pumping? On the specs, sir, that I have read based on their data that have given me, that is the pump, minimum pump efficiency. Of 40%. The, of the actual of the, installation. Uh, yes, sir. That is why it was mentioned also in the previous question, but maybe you can also include computations that, that, that would use the maximum. maximum. So we have the minimum, which is 40. Then, then you can also compute for the maximum, say, 75%. And then the difference between 75 and 40 divided by 2, amo okay, okay, sa dira plus okay. 40 plus ang mid ano. Okay. Wala ka nag-check sa total nila sa sang head. Wala ka nung nag-measure. No sir, the ano, the existing pump has I say has a sealed ano. Ah, wala, sa sang, it has a sealed. May tabo na siya pero pwede mo buksan butangan sang sang string or kagulong. Hindi siya pwede. Hindi sir. It is a sealed sa Picture. Sealed by the DA. Uh -oh. But have you measured the pressure? Because kung wala mo na sa gin-measure, pwede man makuha mong pressure gauge. Na nag-gin-basa nyo ang gauge? Suction head? No, sir. The total dynamic head is already provided, was provided for me. So this is just as assumption? Yes, sir. Assume. So possibly, mga reasons at munigani, you have to perform sang actual Kaya nga, dali, magic ni siya eh. Kung basahon mo, balas amon, pag nakitaan mo muna, ito, it's useless. So, you know, you, you, you have the budget, amon na siya, pero dapat gindetermine nyo gina siya. Kaya nga, uh, kung ang next nga generation will uh, utilize your data, then basi masala man sila. Kung nagsala ka mo subong, basi masala. This is a public document. So, can you check with the, the performance ng mga pumps ng ginagamit? Okay, sir. No, then, sir. So why did DA suggested that kind of data? Is that the same data that they are also giving to the farmers when this kind of system is to be installed? The data that, had, that has been given to me was the basis for their plan for the system. So for my computation, I actually used that for the measuring the actual, for the actual results. Questions again coming from the audience. So the government data, the government data didn't actually use discharge pressure. It didn't have that listed, right? I don't know, sir. Basically. Oh. Wow, time is up. <laughs> Thank you, JV. So, na lang ako. so uh, congratulations to our five panelists and uh, a panelist, I mean, student presenters. <laughs> so, uh, I would like also to thank our panelists. Thank you for all the suggestions. And uh, we will see to it no, that uh, uh, what you have written there and what has been asked uh, would be reviewed and uh, we would uh, also integrate uh, all those uh, comments in the finalization of their manuscript.
So at this point, uh, we will. Oh, so your certificates will just be. Uh oh, ah, yes. Uh, so the winners, no, the results of this, um, uh, um, of this agriculture engineering category student presentation would be known on Friday. So for our five uh, for five for our five student presenters, please come back on Friday in the afternoon for the awarding. Uh, in the morning, I mean, uh, for the awarding of uh, winners no, for this specific category in this same venue. So once again, thank you for everyone. And also, uh, tomorrow we will have the environmental management category and also for the lower years here. Uh, so you still have one year to prepare. No? So you have heard already all the comments and uh, we will try to integrate them for next year's presentation. So thank you and good afternoon.